obviously we all use social media every day but it's just getting into our mind how we can use it for business purposes and how we can tailor it so we can get the best audience, the biggest audience and how you can make the most impact with it. I think some of the key takeaways from this event are that social media is really not a question for the farmer industry. It's the major channel people use to communicate and it has to be present on those channels. But we've heard a lot about not just charging in and doing stuff, doing it in a structured way, thinking about good content, obviously doing it compliantly, but just being interesting and understanding what's relevant to your audience. Okay, so I attended because um, I'm a dermatology account manager for Leo Pharmaceuticals. So I have to see healthcare professions every single day. So we have to abide by the ABPI, we have to be very compliant. So I just wanted to see how I could better do that um, in combination with um, social media. Hey everyone, welcome. That was just a really quick video of our face-to-face -face conference, which I'm sure we all miss these days from our social media pharmaceutical conference. Uh, my name is James Anderson. Um, thank you so much for attending this webinar today. I hope you find it useful. Um, the title of this webinar is all about how you target healthcare professionals using social media. Um, we're going to go through an overview of who we are as a business first, and then we're going to take you through our process of how you target, engage, and ultimately generate demand with healthcare professionals just using social media. So by the end of this session today, hopefully you will have a new framework and understand how you find, engage, and convert HCPs using LinkedIn and secondarily, you're going to understand the power of social media for sales professionals in healthcare. So what is our personal branding mission? What are we all about as a business? In the context of sales and demand generation, our mission is to help sales teams generate sustainable pipeline and demand using social media. We've been doing it consistently for three years, and as you I'm sure you're aware since March has only been exasperated since we have all entered this lockdown in various different stages and phases across the world. To give you an idea of who we are, uh, we are Social Tree Global. And my name is James. I am the co founder of Social Tree Global. We are a dedicated social media agency which focuses in healthcare. So we have clients in pharmaceuticals and we have clients in the medical device space. We also have clients who have built communities of healthcare professionals on social media. So we work with HP in their medical device division. We work with Resenius Carby, the pharmaceutical division. Uh, we work with Reach Thought Leadership, which is an amazing initiative, which actually brings together loads of healthcare professionals from across the world, um, oncologists, um, cardiologists, uh, pediatricians, you name it. Uh, to help them maximize their potential, uh, their personal brand on social media. And we also work in the uh, research field of Ipsos Mori, focusing again on healthcare research, looking at how clinicians and patients are using social media to maximize their engagements uh, with various stakeholders. So everything we're going to tell you today is, is ironclad. It's been used before. We use it all the time in our client campaigns. Um, and the reason why we're telling you this is because it's actually pretty hard to do. And we're pretty comfortable telling you this because it takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of effort, and a lot of knowledge. And that's why we exist as an agency. So we're going to give you a blueprint of how you actually do this. Uh, but um, you may find that you probably don't have the time to do it as effectively as we would. 
So just give you an example in terms of like the work we do. So we work with uh, with Reach, and there's a great community of, of healthcare professionals um, across uh, the US and the world. Uh, we always speak to them. We actually do campaigns with them. So I'm always speaking at personally as a business with healthcare professionals. And the overrider consensus is that they are using social media more and more, uh, irrespective of where they are in the world, and obviously um, talking about various different compliance codes, more and more to understand and engage their patients, but also understand and get new information about key medical device products and services across the world. And they are looking at social media increasingly to do this. In terms of who we've worked with personally, we have uh, testimonials from, from leaders across the healthcare world. This is just one uh, quote from Barat Tarari, who is a former CMO of UCB, and we've helped him with personal branding work for over a year. And we have um, many testimonials about how he worked in the past. So hopefully um, today you can rest assured that we'll be telling you stuff which is gonna be really useful. So what is the big picture today? Well. If you are in sales, uh, you're working in the medical device industry, your digital brand has never been more important. You know, we're based over in London, UK. We're just emerging out of a tier or a second, a second version of lockdown. Um, hospital visiting uh, it is a lot difficult, more difficult now. We know from our clients that in order to even enter hospital, you have to have various different uh, jump through various different hoops. Uh, there's a massive backlog of surgeries that have yet to take place in the NHS. Uh, it's operating in an emergency structure at the moment. I can only speak in the context of England. Uh, but as a result of this, if you are involved in business development, sales, marketing, and you're trying to um, educate healthcare professionals, you have to be a bit smart about how you do that. And the overriding consensus is that social media is a fantastic way of achieving these objectives whilst abiding and listening to the various different social distancing rules which we have at the moment. Um, you know, I don't think things are going to go back to normal, particularly for the next quarter, for Q1 and Q2. Q3 and Q4, things will revert back. But the pendulum has swung irreversibly towards digital. And as a sales professional, it's really important um, to have a digital presence in addition to the face-to-face -face networking, dinners and seminars, which you'll be doing in addition to the prospect and work you've done before. There's just an idea of the impact COVID-19 has had on, on all of us, um, particularly in healthcare, this is just exasperating the sped up, the transformations which are happening already in our space. Uh, COVID-19 is since March, we have been incredibly busy helping sales teams uh, and equip them for the modern selling age. Uh, so we're very well aware that sales professionals who have brilliant established brands, marketing teams have amazing networking and sponsorship events, but where they struggle is the social media piece. And that's where we come in. So we are just helping sales teams add that extra layer of, of, of prospecting to their, to their arsenal. And that's kind of what we're doing. And COVID-19 is obviously ex exasperating that. If we look at social media in the big picture, uh, there are predictions to say that by 2023, there'll be three and a half billion, or almost three and a half billion people on social media. That's half the world's population. Uh, social media use is exploding, particularly since March, definitely around the healthcare space. So we have clients in the pharmaceutical space We're looking at patient engagement, uh, the, the amount of traffic and data and conversations which are happening across the social media universe is absolutely huge. It's incredibly exciting. And it's an excellent time to really understand and harness this incredibly powerful tool to use it for your prospecting efforts. And here are some stats I just pulled um, from, from Google. I mean, you can type in the stats. Uh, you can type in you know, HCP use on social media. You can read research papers. There's a ton of research here. And if you're actually already attending a session, you probably already made the assumption and the correct uh, um, hypothesis that this is something you need to do. But just to reinforce that, um, you know, HCPs are moving increasingly online, uh, not only to understand and inform themselves, but actually to boost their own personal branding and status amongst the professional and research community. So we work with lots of clinicians and physicians across the world, helping them articulate their passions, their professional interest and um, their medical interest on social media. So there's a there's a there's a whole uh, a trio 
of, of, of forces which are driving people on social media. And, you know, anecdotally, I can tell you, healthcare professionals are human and they want to see information from from their from from, from their community if you're based in the us they want to hear from their the brands which they work with they want to hear about the latest innovations technologies they want to learn and they can't learn at the moment by going to face to face events but they will use social media to achieve that we'll go into the next slide about some of the slides people do use um particularly linkedin is becoming a really healthy community and you know at the moment we don't see uh the the content narrative or, or strong enough a narrative from medical device community at all on LinkedIn. And it's a community where there are tens of thousands, if not millions of healthcare professionals on social media. Just to give you an idea of the universe of what we're talking about. So when we're talking about social media, there are many different you know, social media platforms. There are dozens of platforms. But when we're speaking about social media today, we're speaking about a few platforms. So the big platform we spend most of our time on is LinkedIn. Um, we believe, and it's backed up by data, that LinkedIn is the best place for you to start your journey of social selling or engaging HCPs. The reason why is because it just has the captive audience share. Um, we'll go into the stats later on. There are millions of healthcare professionals on LinkedIn. Um, they are working incredibly hard to update their platform to allow healthcare professionals to have deeper, uh, more personal conversations in smaller communities using LinkedIn groups. We actually work with LinkedIn very closely in helping to make this happen. So we partner with LinkedIn and they are making big movements to make this happen. But underneath LinkedIn, there are different platforms which, which, which uh, healthcare professionals use or we all use now. Um, there is Discord, which is quite a new social media um, app which is essentially a chat room. Uh, you can you can join up very, very quickly. It's a public chat room. You can have private chats. So we're finding that Discord is a, is a, is a place for, for conversation. Obviously, Twitter, a great platform for research, for live events. Uh, there's a real healthy community on Twitter, particularly in the research space. And finally, WhatsApp. You know, WhatsApp, it's crude, but effective. You know, a hell of a lot of traffic goes through WhatsApp both for personal and professional use. So when we're talking about um, uh, we're, we're talking about social media, we're spending uh, talk, talking about the, these tools here. So just a question here from uh, Carolyn. Uh, yeah, Discord is the app. There's there's quite a few um, tools. There's loads of social media apps. Some rise to the top, many don't make it. Uh, Discord is one of them which is rising to the top. Uh, but for purpose of today's conversation, today's seminar, we'll be focusing more on LinkedIn for purposes of time. There's a lot you can do on these chats, um, uh, social media platforms, uh, but to be honest with you, I think everyone's time you best serve you focus on the big beast, which is LinkedIn. You can pretty much achieve that. Had a question, why is Discord popular? Uh, Discord is popular because of its user um, uh, user functionality, and we just find that Discord seems to have picked up a lot of interest, particularly in uh, alumni, uh, graduates um, uh, cohorts, so uh, there, there, there's there's a, there's a big bleed over between between Twitch, between Discord, and you'll find that particularly in the last couple of years, when you've had research fellows, graduates, they have become native to these tools, and naturally, it's it's a tool which we've seen there to be some traction. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll focus on LinkedIn for this session because um, we just want to. I think if you can start off on LinkedIn and do that right the other platforms can come into your own. So to give you an idea of the uh, the, the, the kind of the, the big picture amplification we're focusing on. So when we're talking about social media, we're talking about many different things. And when people think about social media, they think about paid ads. They think about, well, we'll just put an ad up, pay some money uh, and promote it. And whilst that's certainly true, the paid side is really relevant. Um, and there are modules we focus on the paid. For sales professionals, the right-hand side, the organic uh, sort of string to this family tree is where we're going to be focusing on today. So we're going to be focusing on two things, social selling and employee advocacy. These are two methods of amplification, which we feel and we know many brands aren't leveraging in the best way possible. So we have brands who have staff or sales teams of 10, 20, 30, 50 staff, even 100 uh, members in the sales team who don't have a coordinated social selling strategy to actually engage their uh, community of, of healthcare professionals online. We're going to go into how you do that for your session, 
but I thought this model would be useful for everyone today to tell you what the big picture is. So as you can see, social selling is one part of a broader um, network of amplification. And this process is something you work in your marketing with. You can't work in isolation. As you can see, this universe amplification, if you're doing all of these things correctly, then you have a really effective social media strategy. Um, and if you're not, um, you're going to obviously struggle. So today we'll be focusing on social selling. Don't worry, we'll go into the definition of what that is in a minute. And we'll be touching on employee advocacy as well. So let's kind of break down and, and we'll, we will break down into what social selling is. And obviously, before we do that, just cover off some of the things that haven't changed when it comes to social media. So we've spoken a lot about the things which have changed. Um, oh, I had a, a quote from Jeff Burt. I've heard some good things when you work with Fran HP. Yeah, Fran is amazing. Uh, she is a, a really excited to be working with her. Um, and um, and yeah, she, she's she's great. And she's a real uh, inspiration to us at the company. So yeah, thanks, thanks for the feedback, Jeff. Um, we, we, we're um, obviously talking about um, uh, things which haven't changed. So just quickly touching on this idea of empathy. So, you know, there's a lot of research and, and research coming out of REACH and Ipsos around clinical empathy, around how um, we can all, well, particularly anyone in healthcare, can, can articulate empathy better using digital. Um, and this is, um, this is relevant for, for anyone um, and, and really across the world at the moment. It's how do you actually, how do you actually, truly come across as someone who actually understands the problems your community are facing at the moment. And, and, and we mean that in a sincere way possible. So the example is here in this webinar, you know, obviously I'm speaking to marketing, communications professionals, uh, primarily focusing in the medical device space. Um, and and I, I, I'd like to hope, and I think I've done enough research to understand what the issue is at the moment. So when you're speaking to people, you have this sense of empathy and understanding. And this hasn't changed. And social media is a great way of articulating this. You can only have empathy if you understand what someone else is feeling. And how you understand what people are feeling is through research, understanding data, understanding your community, understanding what they're talking about. This hasn't changed. And social media, particularly during this pandemic, is a great way of demonstrating empathy, particularly when it comes to sales. Um, and just quickly, I want to touch on this idea of influence. So um, I wanted to kind of give you a high level overview of, of some of our feelings and, and, and sorry, not feelings, our, our frameworks, how we approach social media, because I think it's very important before we get into the tactics to discuss the strategy. And this wheel here is probably the most important model we use as an agency across all of our campaigns. It, it bleeds into everything we do. And this is the principles of, of, of persuasion by Robert Cialdini and fantastic uh, book associated course. And we actually done uh, a, a training a course. It took six months uh, with one of Robert Cialdini's students. And these uh, triggers here are broadly speaking, there's triggers of influence and persuasion. And we use this for all of our marketing and comms. And obviously, if you, you know, some of you here might have heard this already. I won't go into too much detail um, because this is a topic in itself. But as you can see, you have different nodes or different triggers which essentially um, uh, anchor people towards influence. So you have liking, which is, again, in the context of social media, are you likable? Do you come across as a company or a person who people feel warm towards? Social proof, again, social media is a great way of, of, of leveraging social proof. If you're on social media, if you're posting good stuff on social media, if you're posting, you know, uh, a great stuff and you're getting likes and comments and engagement, social proof means people are going more inclined to, to buy from you because you have influence. You have consistency. So if, do you have a consistent message on social media? Are you consistent in your branding, both as a personal brand and a company brand? Again, really important. And then fi not finally, you have authority, probably the most important principle of influence. If you are, you know, giving really um, nuanced uh, technical knowledge of certain uh, uh, devices, whatever sector you're in, you have to demonstrate authority. I'd argue as a sales professional, authority is probably the most important factor when you're selling medical devices because you're speaking to a community who are incredibly educated and where the stakes cannot be higher. You're dealing with human lives. There's nothing more serious than this, really. 
So demonstrating authority on social media is incredibly important. It's mission critical for sales professionals to be on social media demonstrating authority around certain products and themes. Now, I know there is a big uh, ace card which people like to pull around compliance. Uh, I can't talk about this because I'm, I'm under certain legislations. Obviously, in the UK, we have very different um, compliance framework to US. But I, I really think that is just an excuse um, because when you actually sit down and you break down the things you can speak about, when you understand the technology, the compliance problem fades into obscurity. So the compliance issue, you know, this, this is a, it's an excuse. Everyone says to me, I can't do it because of compliance things when it happen. Well, it's not true because it is happening and you can make it happen and you can work with the compliance team to make your social setting effective. And then we have reciprocity at the top. So this is, again, giving value to your, your community, giving value to HCP, is actually genuinely caring, producing content, which is, which is really just good stuff. People care about that. And the more you do that, the more people are feeling more inclined to work with you. And then finally, have scarcity, which, again, posting a few times a week, making things scarce, being like the sun. Obviously, in the United Kingdom, in England, we never have the sun. When the sun comes out, we, we, we go crazy in England. It's, it's, it's quite scary sometimes seeing what happens to English people when the sun comes out. Uh, and the reason why is because we never see the sun. So we always say to our clients, you know, try and be like the sun on social media. Uh, shine bright, but don't shine every day because people will get used to you. So now I'm going to break down into social selling. Sorry, social selling is a bit of a tongue twister. So this is what we're going to focus most of our time on. So as we go back um, in time, we we uh, go back to that model of these amplifications. So we're focusing on social selling today. And the reason why is because the, the title of this webinar is Targeting and Engaging HTTP. So this is very much coming as a social seller. You're a sales professional. You're on LinkedIn. You're scratching your head and you're going, right, how am I going to build a pipeline? How am I going to have conversations? How am I going to uh, uh, generate a sustainable um, uh, channel of attack for next year, given the fact that there's normally no major events for the first six months of next year? Um, we run events, as you saw at the beginning. We have no plan to do any events until at least Q3 or Q4 next year. So this is like mission critical. And this is the definition of social selling. Social selling is about selling your professional profile on social media. It's harnessing the awesome power of social to elevate yourself amongst your key stakeholders. So when we talk about social selling, we're talking about this shift away from the old sales model, which you see on the left, to the new sales model, which you see on the right. And again, there's many different ways you can skin a cat of this. So there is, broadly speaking, a shift in the way in which people buy buyers or healthcare professionals or whoever your stakeholders is across the world are becoming more informed. The information they're getting is being given to them on demand and whenever they want. So it's kind of a, a constant drip of information. So as a sales professional, you're no longer the sole arbiter of knowledge. You might go to a hospital, you might speak to uh, your, your, you know, somebody, in your, a contact there, but you don't know how much work they've done behind the scenes on social media, researching you, your brand, your company, your products, the key themes. This piece of the online journey, the social media journey, is a massive piece of the puzzle in the future sales mix. If you focus too much on the old sales model, which is, again, very traditional, show up, do a pitch, go home, show up, do a pitch, go home, you're missing this other 40 to 60% of the buying journey, which people are doing when they're at home and when they're on LinkedIn. And where we specialize is helping sales teams and, and, and sales marketing leaders get that digital element up and running, still have the face-to-face -face piece. We're not saying face-to-face -face is going to go. We're not making any ludicrous claims like that. We all know that we love meeting face-to-face. -face. Nothing quite you know, matches up to having that that presentation or that or that workshop where you have people in the room and you're getting your tools out and you're, you're kind of teaching them to use things. We're not saying that. What we are saying that the digital way of selling is here to stay and having a, a, a plan and a strategy as to how you engage people online is really, really important. So the new sales model has three different phases. We have the social network, educating and engaging. So this is all about 
a sales professional taking a leaf out of marketing and actually becoming a bit of a thought leader. So actually becoming a consultant. Sales professionals, you know, I come from sales traditionally and we always beat ourselves up and say, oh, I can't talk about this. But I actually find that if you speak to a sales professional, they know probably as much or, or not more about their products or services than some of the people they're selling to. So when it comes to certain topics, you are absolutely in your right to say, I know what I'm talking about here because I, I sell this stuff every single day. I'm talking to my community every single day. I know this stuff. And what we are trying to do is help you put that information on social media so people can see that information and using the principles of authority and influence, unlocking that awareness and engagement amongst the community to hopefully generate more demand and having the right infrastructure in place to do that. So this is kind of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make sales professionals more aware of the importance of education, awareness, and general digital branding to help them in the sales process. I just had a thank you, Sunila, excellent presentation. Appreciate the feedback um, and had a question from Claudia. Uh, why qualify leaders consider old sales model isn't just a way to identify leads? Do you believe that the personal contact? Uh, again, so what we mean by um, qualifying leads, Claudia, again, it's, it's really important to qualify. So, you know, having a, a conversation, um, uh, finding out budget holders, time horizons, and all that stuff's important. But what we're saying is the qualification process is made a lot easier if you have already done some of the preparation in terms of creating content and creating the necessary gates to qualify your contacts. So an example of this is if I'm doing a webinar now, 95% of you or, or whoever it be will find it really interesting, just get on their day. Some people will be sitting around going, hang on a minute, yeah, I, I think I need some more support in that. And then we'll have a call, but the qualification was done through content and not me just calling cold and prospecting. So that's kind of the difference here. I'm not disqualifying qualifying at all. We're just saying that the digital component of your social selling piece is really important in adding a second string to your qualifying bow. And just to reiterate, I'm not saying the, the phone doesn't work. I'm not saying going and meeting people face to face doesn't work. All I'm saying is having this digital element is just a really, really great way to add in that third channel of attack for your prospecting. Do you believe that the personal contact sales is no longer part of the new sales model? Uh, no, no, 100% personal networking is huge. Your personal network, of course, people buy from people. I'm not making any sensationalist claims. Anyone that says that they don't meet anyone anymore, they're lying. I, you know, this is important stuff. You know, what I'm saying is that the social selling piece is a piece of the puzzle which most people are completely ignoring. And our mission is to bring sales professionals up so they have that 40% in the digital world and are still doing their stuff, which they know works in, in the traditional world. That's all we're saying. And again, so I, just sorry, I'm just reading questions for those who don't know. Um, side. So a question from Jeff Burt on the engagement side, what do you think about an advocacy program? We know our competitors are employing this, but our team at home isn't sure on how to play this. Jeff, that is a massive part of our business. So we do it all the time. So yes, advocacy is huge. Massive 2021. I would say the biggest pivot, the biggest thing you guys can do if you're in a business right now is look at your team and say there's 100,000, 5,000 staff. How do we leverage our individual networks to boost our content. Massive open goal. We're doing advertising campaigns all the time for our clients because traditional paid, just paying to do an ad, it's not enough now. But Jeff is spot on. You're on the right tracks. This is 100% what you should be doing. And actually, it's what we sell as a product. So you kind of second guess me. Um, so yeah, you're bang on there. Um, to give you some idea on the size, it's 575 million users. Um, 575 million users, so actually it's more like 600 million now, so there's millions of users. It's huge LinkedIn uh, in terms of the professionals. So this is actually um, some stats from uh, Pharma. Uh, so this is not uh, this is just for Pharma, okay? So we're not talking about any other sector at the moment. Uh, there are 24,000 CEOs. There are 15 million hospital and healthcare professionals on LinkedIn, and there are 4 million pharma professionals. So there are millions of people on LinkedIn 
the, the community is already there. So it's just now a strategy of, okay, how do we actually, you know, how, how do we actually do this? Uh, this is literally the piece. So th th they're already there. So if anyone's saying to you, oh, I don't know about LinkedIn, I just can't see oncologists being on LinkedIn. I can't see cardiologists. I can't, it's a lie. They're on LinkedIn. And if you want proof, just message me and I'll send you the stats because they're, they're literally on LinkedIn all the time. Um, so we don't have a breakdown to, to tell you how to do it. So how do you actually do this? Um, again, I have to warn you, there is going to be some terrible hairstyles on the following slides. Terrible 80s hairstyles. I can only apologize in advance, but as you'll soon find out, there is a very good reason for this. Um, before we reveal the terrible hairstyles, I wanted to show you this slide here. So um, this is a slide of SSI. So the SSI is called the Social Selling Index. Um, and the Social Selling Index is essentially the uh, aggregated uh, way LinkedIn can measure your performance as a sales professional on LinkedIn. So Social Selling Index has four different indices. Uh, you have establishing your professional brand, finding the right people, engaging with insights, and building relationships. These are the four different components of building a personal brand on social media. LinkedIn uses as a tool. So you can actually find out your SSI. And Tom, if you wouldn't mind putting the link uh, in the chat, um, you can now all find out your own SSI. So you can see where you are. Uh, if you get above 50, you're doing a great start, 60, great, 70, 80, 90. If you get above 80, then you're better than me. So um, serious questions will be asked about why you're not leading the webinar rather than watching it. Um, so you can find your SSI there. It's a really good way to uh, measure performance. This is a very basic tool. And going back to your point, Jeff, when we do an, uh, an advocacy program, we, we work with sometimes 10 to 15 different um, measures of success. This is a really crude barometer of success. It's by no means exhaustive. I've known people who have SSIs of 90, but they're really bad on LinkedIn. So don't take this super seriously. It's just a finger in the air barometer of where you are. Um, but what you should consider are the four different um, indices here. So they all largely line up to um, what we cover when we do social selling. So establishing a professional brand, how good is your LinkedIn profile, um, how well optimized it, um, how well optimized is it finding the right people how well do you use search do you understand the platform um, for example you know the LinkedIn search is a very basic form of search it's a free version of search and Microsoft who own LinkedIn put a strangle on on free users if you pay some money you can use LinkedIn's premium tools such as sales navigator and increasingly um, integrate Dynamics. So if you have any, um, if you are reviewing your, your um, CRM, uh, the reason why Microsoft and Salesforce were in a bidding war for LinkedIn was because the future of sales and sales enablement is truly integrating LinkedIn with your CRM. And the easiest way of doing this is integrating Dynamics with Salesforce, sorry, with, with Sales Navigator. And then you have the start of a truly integrated social digital sales enablement and again that's another project entirely uh, but just to let you know that's kind of what this is going uh sophie asked if 62 is good yes it is good sophie um always room for improvement but good start and now on to the terrible hairdos so this these are my parents and it's a note again you can fact check it fact check this they are part of an 80s group called shack attack and you spell shack attack S-H-A-K-A-T-A-K. -A -A -A. They had some hits in the 80s, very big in Japan. Uh, my dad's on the left-hand side. My mum is in the middle. Uh, amazing hairstyles. So I grew up with parents who were, were essentially musicians that are going to gigs, and, and they were rock stars in the 80s. They generally had a big audience. And what I learned from, from, from Shack Attack, from, from, from watching them, um, is that Sam Barnes has seen them live. Well, Sam... Did you think you'd be attending a webinar on, um, what well, a work webinar, and finally meeting the, the, the offspring of Shack Attack? So, uh, Sam, when they're back to doing gigs, you may get a VIP entry if you uh, message me on LinkedIn. We'll see how I can do. Um, so, yeah, 
Um, the reason why I put this here is a serious note because, you know, when you're doing this type of stuff, you have to think about your audience. So, you know, you have to think about, well, if I'm going to go on LinkedIn, if I'm going to be targeting, you know, for example, if you're targeting uh, pediatricians, as an example, just what, name your name your pick your poison. Um, you have to think about what they want to see, you know, and you have to relate that to, well, what they want to see, what am I trying to sell, what's interesting to me. You have to be aware that, you know, you are actually producing content. You're a content creator and you have to get into the mind of a creator, of, of an artist, because in many ways what we're doing is creating compelling content for our audience. So you have to think about who is my audience? Who am I focusing on? What's my community? Am I am I creating a content for leaders? Am I creating content for nurses? Am I creating content for, uh, uh, for, for you know, um, uh, business leaders, whatever your content ecosystem is, you have to think about who your audience is. And finally, how do you keep your community engaged? So this is another thing. A lot of people will do content on social media and they'll be doing social selling, but they won't really work out a plan to keep their community engaged. You keep them engaged through consistent content, through having those principles of influence persuasion at all times in your content. So you know, to kind of summarize this idea, this analogy, Think about yourself as a as a as an artist, as the as Shack Attack in the 80s. You have your audience, you've got to grow your audience, and you have to keep them interested in different content. Okay. Really important. You know, don't just share stuff from the company page and expect people are going to be attracted to it. Inject some humanity, inject some authenticity into your content, and then people will engage with it. And as we'll see later on, if they engage with your content, they're going to see your content more. And when we talk about this idea, so again, I'm throwing lots of models at you here, but this is a, a, a these are the steps you need to take to actually have a personal brand. So when we talk about personal branding, it's a massive part of social selling. As we saw earlier on, uh, if you are on LinkedIn and you have to become um, uh, principal, uh, yes, Katie is recorded, so you can watch it back. So don't worry, you can watch it on demand. So people are freaking out, going, there's too much information. It's fine, it's recorded, you can watch it back whenever you want. So no problems. Just enjoy the webinar um, and you can watch it back. This is the model for leadership we use. So when we work with sales teams, we, we go through this. We go through the strategy first. So we define the strategy, define the messaging based on the strategy. So, you know, based on our research and who the target audience is, previous campaigns, we work on content. So, you know, if you're a sales team, we work with marketing. So we work in partnership with loads of different stakeholders. We bring them together and say, look, Sales team want to do this. Marketing, you have some amazing content. We'll just bring it over to here. Uh, talk to your sales team. They might have some interesting insights. Get out of their head on social media. Design, syndication, and generation. Sorry, uh, syndication. Finding other bits of content from across the web. Stuff you love. Interesting insights. And then, crucially, demand generation. This is what it's all about. We're, we're in this about demand. You know, we did an email campaign to many of you. We use LinkedIn. We use our proprietary technology to find relevant contacts from across the world who may be interested in this webinar. This has tangible stuff. We're not talking about vapid brand work. We're talking about this as a you know, rubber to the road. How do you generate demand in three months? What's the process? We have that laser focus, right? For social selling, it's really important to have that laser focus. Your thought leadership has to go somewhere. It has to lead to generate demand. And it can do that if you have all these other principles in place. And obviously, there's media relations as well. So when we talk about media in the context of this world, we talk about associations, bodies, partnerships, universities, anyone who you think would be interested in hearing about what you have to say, leveraging a network, and then going from there. So SSI 42, good start. Uh, and you can do some basic stuff out today. I think by the end of the session, we can boost it up for you, Jeff. So no worries. So what does good for leadership look like practically? It looks like a targeted increase in audience size. So you should have, from doing this, a bigger network in your audience. You should be actively connecting with people, bringing people in, saying, look, this is my, this is my piece of research. This is my, um, uh, uh, here's who I am. Uh, love to connect with you. Being proactive, being hungry. A hungry sales professional on social media, getting out there, connecting to people. The idea that you shouldn't connect to people you don't know, I think is rubbish. I think everyone knows it's rubbish. Don't be afraid. Connect with people, but bring them value first 
it looks like increased engagement from what you have to say. So if you're saying stuff and no one's liking your content, then you need to review why is that the case? You need to have an increased engagement. So this is what you should be looking for. A target increase inside, increased engagement for what you have to say, and ultimately more business opportunities from your social media networking. So this stuff has to go somewhere. The analogy we'd like to use is this is basically a massive online, constantly turned on, never switched off business expo. That's what LinkedIn is. It's a constant, it's a massive expo with 600 million people swimming through. And your job is to create a little space in this massive digital world where your audience will listen to you and they'll take what you had to say seriously. And as a result, they're more likely to buy from you if they see you in person, or they might actually buy from you completely remotely. So this is what success looks like on social. So to boil this down, when you're targeting and engaging HCPs, there are three phases. There's a connection phase, an engagement phase, and a conversion phase. This is you know, boiling everything down to its simplest, simplest level. Connecting, engaging, converting. So these are the three different phases. It sounds simple, but so does golf. Golf sounds simple. It's just hitting a ball. But obviously, it's more complicated than that. Each phase has a different barometer of success, a different strategy. But if you want to boil your campaigns down, month one, connecting, month two, engaging, month three, converting. So what does connecting look like? So there are four phases to this. So first one is building your ecosystem. So your ecosystem of, of, of potential clients. So what they look like, how many of them are there? Are there 5,000? Are there 10,000? Are there 15,000? Are there 20,000? Where are they based? Um, you know, what's your ecosystem? What's the totality of your ecosystem? The second thing is listening to your audience. So do you have any social selling, social media uh, listening tools to understand what they're saying, who are the uh, leaders, who are the influencers in this space, who are the associations you have, these captive communities. And then you use tools such as Sales Navigator, which is a tool which LinkedIn used the premium functionality to actually start bringing these people into your network. And you can use Twitter search as well. There's a tool which we use called BuzzSumo, which allows you to do this as well. So this is the four, these are the phases of connecting. Uh, again, each phase, complicated, takes time, uh, takes you know effort, but again, this is this is this is uh, difficult. Okay. Uh, what about sales reps? Normally don't like to have this kind of approach, see it as competition to the work, also impact on the income. Uh, I'm not sure, so if you could clarify. So I think you're saying are you asking, you know, what's the what how do you um, incentivize sales reps to go on social media? If you wouldn't mind clarifying, I'm not sure about the question. Um, so building an ecosystem. So this is LinkedIn. Again, I can show you quickly my LinkedIn. So if we go onto LinkedIn now, um, I will share my screen to break out quickly um, to give you an idea. So, right. So again, this is LinkedIn. Uh, go on the Sales Navigator. You know, as I was saying earlier on, your audiences are there. Um, this tool here is a great tool to actually build out your database. You can build lists. You know, if I type in, um, let's type in now, let's type in oncology. Type in oncologist. Oncologist, 13,000 results. And again, you can specify this as much as you want. You can go into granular detail. We build very detailed lists for our clients. We build like lists for all of our sales reps. We do this for our sales reps. They're very busy. Um, we use a combination of search of our own um, inbuilt in-house tools to build these databases out. So this is kind of just roughly what we mean by when we look at kind of building your connecting. So um, going back to the slides now, um, this is what we meant by building your ecosystem. So actually using Sales Navigator to do that. Uh, there are more tools. You can use the free version of, of LinkedIn, which is just LinkedIn search to do this. You can type in LinkedIn, you can type in who you are search, and you can find your audience there. And then obviously looking at Sales Navigator as well. So when you talk about listening to your audience, again, social listening, really important. Um, uh, and it's really important to do. So I just had a question from Sophia. Um, all this sounds great, but I just don't have time to implement this. We have a very small internal team. How do you make the most of this? Well, yes, we don't have time. So I recommend... Um, 
Uh, yeah, good question, Sophie. That's why we, to most we do it for our clients. So we we have a service, we do it for you, and we're not super expensive. We're not like tens of thousands of pounds. Um, I'll show you at the end. We understand this is a lot of work, so this is not easy to do. Like, if it was easy, everyone would do it. It takes time and effort and knowledge. And you're right. You can come across as spammy, and you can make your you can ruin reputation by doing this wrong. So it's really important to invest three to six months so we for example with our work we work with clients for say six months sometimes where we start off very hands-on we're almost doing it for them uh, they see that as a case study of results and over three more months we actually train them to do it so we have an online learning tool we teach people to do it we bring people in and we kind of operate as an ad hoc partner so it's kind of a social media transformation project um Yes, we create content. Yes, we do that all for our clients. We create content. We get in the team. We basically come in and we can do this all for you. If you find this is too too much, we do it all for you. That's our whole business. Um, that's why we're here um, because it's really hard. It's like doing SEO, um, but it's important for your sales team to do. Um, so it's a combination of we will, we will do it for you, but we'll also teach you how to do it. So some of our clients, they've been with us for years, have actually now – brought this in-house they've hired the appropriate teams management know about what's going on and we are basically a knowledge partner so we help them do it for them but in the short term uh, to get the quick wins we'll just come in do it all for our clients like a turnkey over long term we'll train them to do it themselves that's the ultimate win is having this skill in-house but short term you know to get results next quarter we'll come in and do it for our clients so just talking about engagement. So again, the idea of content marketing, um, big part of everything, you know, your social media team, your sales team need to have good content. They have to be saying stuff which is interesting. Otherwise, what's the point? You need to have good content. The actual, we can, or you can create yourself or you can do it for us. You don't have to, you know, create crazy assets. You can create a text post. It's absolutely fine. Um, don't need to, you know, do crazy content. Um, but having content is good. And then finally, the conversion event. So this is a really important part of all work is where, this, where does this all lead to? In the past, we'd invite people to events. So social selling, engagement, all great. Where's the pipeline? Pipeline can be events. It could be networking dinners. Obviously, at the moment with lockdown, I doubt it. Uh, but we're finding that there is a lot of value for community building. So whether it's virtual events for your for your community, whether it's giving people exclusive insights, new technology, online seminars, whatever it is. And finally, lead magnets. So if you if you're working with a marketing team and you want to, you know, generate your own lead magnet, booking a call, you can generate this. But everything has to lead to something tangible. And that's what this is all about. It's a social selling campaign. It's not a campaign just to make yourself feel good. It's a campaign to tangibly get results. Um, I'm aware of time. Um, so, you know, looking at this stuff, there is tangible value to this. So obviously we've got, you know, 205 people sign up to this and we have about 1,000 webinars a month. Sorry, attendees a month. Um, uh, and we, we do this as part of social selling. And just for the time we have left, I know people are asking questions. I want to spend some time on Q&A. But we've had some questions about how you actually do this. But we actually do this for you as demand generation campaign and um, it will lead to more leads more awareness and more authority and they're the three things we benchmark ourselves against so we'll get you more leads and we'll definitely give you more awareness and we'll boost your authority using the principles of influence persuasion and helping you achieve that both for your personal brand as a sales professional and for your team so we can do it for members of your team uh, we can do it for one person uh, it depends how you want to work and how your organization works. So this is a demand generation campaign. Um, and um, what you get in this campaign is a three-month campaign. So we ask for three months. We need three months. We need a commitment of three months because that's what it takes. It doesn't take overnight. Um, and in that three months, you get four things. You get a report. You have a creative review. You get your creative done for you. And um, we go out there. We go on Sales Navigator, we build the list for you, we create connection messages, we do this all for you, and then we help you generate sustainable demand in your digital avatar. So this package um, is a three-month package, and the value here, obviously, the first thing is we do a report, which is the first thing. So we go in and we talk to you, 
we, we understand the strategy and we go away and do some research and we actually build a plan. It's a plan you can take away to your team, but also it's a plan of how we're going to help you. And this is a really good piece of work. It's a strategy report, gives you data on your community, who's saying what, when, and how we're going to go from there. The second thing is creative. So we're going to you know, create the assets for you. You have a creative team. We'll work with your marketing team as well. It's a partnership. So we'll, we'll help with changing white papers to content posts. Uh, some of our clients are really busy. They get, they get on a call to us for half an hour. They talk about some topics. Our, 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 our team of, of copywriters will listen to the call and they'll create white papers or comments from that. So we'll basically get this content done for you. And in the amplification, we actually go out there and actually do it for you. So we actually go out there, get the messages out, um, message people, uh, work out how you're going to leverage your network and your business's network. Um, we'll be working with different nodes, so whether it's social selling amplification, it was amplification for advocacy, wherever it is, we'll be helping you every step of the way to make that happen. And then finally, demand. We'll be helping you create a conversion event, whether it's an online event like today, whether it's a series, whether it's a LinkedIn group. So some of our clients have LinkedIn groups they want to create. So look, we love to get 500 people in this group by a month free. We will work towards having that as a goal. But ultimately, we want to help you create that conversion event. And this is what a free month campaign looks like. It's basically everything we have uh, in three months. We throw the kitchen sink because we want to show our value. We want to prove that we can we can really help. Um, so usually, obviously, now you know over the year we we charge almost five thousand pounds for that. But you know today we want to give it to you. Uh, it's three months for two hundred nine two thousand nine two nine nine to uh, stand a three k. And so you can sign up. And if you wanted to book the call to chat, you're not paying for anything now. If you wanted to chat about your strategy. You can follow the link below and book a, a time with me to talk about your strategy. You're under no obligation to book this at all. But if you are interested, obviously, to, for my time as well, um, please book it. But you're under no obligations to, to, to book this at all. Um, so that's kind of what we're offering. Um, and, and if you want to get in touch, just book a call down there and we can help you. So with the time we have left, we will do some Q&A. So, um, yeah, so there, there's some um, there's some questions here. So 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 just to quickly, we've got a meme here. So if you, if you are feeling overwhelmed with the choices, don't worry. Just book a call anyway, and we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. Work out where you're at and what you need to do moving forwards. Okay, if, you, if you're interested but you think I don't know what this is, don't worry. Just book a call and I'll talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but yeah, just a quick question on on local laws. So yes, compliance is a consideration. But we have we've been doing this for quite some time now. We haven't had a major issue because you have to work with your compliance team to find the space in which you are comfortable as a brand, both in the legal perspective and the um, uh, um, just the business development perspective, comfortable speaking about. And there is space for that. So local laws on LinkedIn. If you post something on LinkedIn, assume it's public. However, if you create a group on LinkedIn and it's private, you can change the means and way of interaction. So it's all about understanding the platform, moving the dial across different nodes across LinkedIn to target certain messages to certain people. Some messages are direct message online, some messages are public. But broadly, broadly speaking, having a chat with your compliance team, and we can help do this, bringing them into the conversation early, saying, look, we want to try something on social media. Where do you feel comfortable? Where's the space we can speak about? Where's the area we can make our own? And add some depth to that, then you can make it happen. So whatever that is, you let, you know, it, it, it kind of entirely depends. Um, so I've got some Q&A here and a question. So let's go to the top. Is it possible to get a document or a video or a webinar? Yes. Yes, it will be available later. Hey, Violetta. Uh, are you seeing a pattern booster person, Brownie? Yes, HCPs are. And we're actually helping HCPs do it. So we're helping HCPs become thought leaders because it's in their interest to be on social media because their interest is I need to be on social media because I need to be demonstrating my authority. You know, if I, if I speak at events or, or, or conferences, I can't just be sitting in the, in the shadows 
not having a social media presence. I need to be on social media talking. So they have an interest in social media com completely. And for younger, yeah, HTTP, again, this is just native to younger people. People are graduating now. Social media, LinkedIn is just native to them. It's 100%. Um, I, there are stats, Deba. Yes, um, just need to, again, it, we're talking about a community of 15 million people. So it's really hard to, to give you accurate stats. If you wanted to find out, then you can look a call. We can do some fact finding together. How can we make our HTTPs use social media more? Well, again, um, just look at the competition. If you're, if you're, you know, there is a saying saying that, you know, social media is a meritocracy, doesn't care who you were before. It's a level playing field on social. If you're not, if you are someone who is career driven, you know, the HDPs are elites. They're very smart. They are very competitive sometimes. And social media uh, is another way for them to articulate themselves and promote themselves online. Uh, so if you're not, if you can't persuade people to go on it, uh, maybe for the older generation, maybe people who have such a good reputation. Maybe there are some people who don't need to go on social media, but most people, most professionals now um, will be looking over at LinkedIn with a, you know, with a, with a serious eye because it will help your, with your branding. Uh, to follow up to lead, collecting on the lead, Jen, for example. Um, hang on. Yeah, I mean, so the sales team, if you're doing a social selling campaign, you will generate demand, but it's up to your sales team to follow up. Um, we, we're not going to do it for you. So we, we'll, we will do the initial outreach. We'll build the system. But the sales team, the one-on-one -on -one conversations, we can't replace that. That's when the sales team really come into their own. So we can build the automated processes. We can create the content. We can create the strategy. We can get them going. But ultimately, the, 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 the rubber hits the road when someone says, hey, I'm interested in having a chat. That's when the sales team come into their own. So you know, if you can't persuade your sales team to, to go on LinkedIn now, I'll ask them, well, what's your alternative? What are you going to do next quarter? There's no events planned. There's nothing, and at least until June. What's your plan? How are we going to get demand? Uh, are you going to just call people? Are you going to turn up to hospitals and just wave people down during a pandemic? Is that going to look good for your brand? You know, we're moving to a world now where, um, the environmental impacts and now the health impacts of traveling to places when you can do Zoom calls and social media interactions is now going to become more commonplace. So I just ask, what's the alternative? I'd argue there's not many other alternatives right now other than doing social selling. Um, so I don't know if we have any other um, questions. We've got a few minutes, I think. We have two minutes. So anyone else want to ask a question? Oh, okay. Hey, we've got a few here. Uh, I'm also interested in case examples demonstrate. Yeah, so case studies. Yes, we can show you case studies. So, uh, if you wanted to see a case study, we have lots. Again, um, I can't with an hour. If were, some case studies aren't going to be applicable to others, so we can definitely show you a case study referrals. Uh, completely in touch with some of our clients. They're happy, happy to do that on a, on another call. Uh, do you have inspirators of other European countries like Germany? Yes, Switzerland, we work with. So we, we specialize in health and wealth. We work with UBS Asset Management in Switzerland. Um, and the main really question is foreign languages. We don't have a specialism in foreign. We are English-speaking agency. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't work with foreign languages. It just means that we, can, we can't provide the copy and stuff. Um, so, yeah. But DAX, big region. Obviously, Zing uh, was a big is the LinkedIn of the DAC region. Increasingly, we're finding more and more people are moving over to, to LinkedIn. Um, can you survey member posts in groups versus and put it down? Yes, you can. If you run a group, you can moderate it. You can create it as a private group. Um, groups are great. If you want to have a community of, of people in a very moderated area, groups are fantastic, and we help you build these communities. So if you say, I want to build a community of these people, we we'll help you build them. We can moderate the community. Uh, we can help you with, with hiring. So if you bring someone in as a junior community manager, we'll help you train that person up and hand the reins over to them and work as a consultant. So we're very much your partner. If you want to do it yourself, you can do it yourself. If you want us to do it for you, you we can. We can do a bit of both, and that's how we help. So 
Um, I think that's come out to the hour. Uh, thank you for all the wonderful feedback. I really appreciate it. And I think we can say Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas. I don't have my Christmas hat, which is a shame. I was going to put my Christmas hat on and say goodbye, but I can't. But I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. We've got two weeks to go. Uh, so if you want to chat now, we can speak about January. After the 18th of December, I'll be clocking off and enjoying my Christmas and New Year's turkey or New Year's drinks at home. So thank you very much for attending, everyone. Um, and looking forward to continuing the conversation with some of you on social media.